Greetings, parental unit. If you've recently signed your kid up for music lessons that he or she didn't ask for, or if you're thinking about doing so, this video is for you. If you're a parent who has already subjected your kid to several months or years of music lessons that he or she is not enjoying, then you might want to stop watching right now. I'm about to make you feel like a terrible person. It's time for some harsh truth about music lessons. Look, I know you have the best of intentions. You want to give your child every possible advantage in life, and you've heard that music lessons magically instill all sorts of skills and abilities that contribute to mental and emotional greatness. Or maybe you're a musician yourself, and you want your kid to have that same expressive outlet that you enjoy. Or maybe you regret that you never stuck with those piano lessons you took as a kid, and you don't want your child to have similar regrets later in life. I feel you. I really do. Those are all great reasons to offer your kid music lessons. They are not, however, good reasons to require your kid to take music lessons or to make your kid continue with lessons that he or she isn't enjoying. Don't get me wrong, I totally approve of making kids do many things against their will. Make them learn how to write well, for instance, without emojis. Make them eat veggies and help with the household chores. Make them learn to swim so they don't drown in the neighbor's pool. But why in God's name would you force a kid to learn music? I'll tell you why most parents do it. It's because they've been misinformed. Allow me to debunk the eight most common reasons parents give for forcing their kids to take music lessons. But let me be clear. If your kid wants to play an instrument, then all of these reasons are valid. But if your child doesn't like making music, then these are all terrible reasons for forcing him or her to stick with it. Bad reason number one, music improves math skills. I don't think anyone knows for sure where people first got the idea that music and math have some mystical connection, but it's a myth and a very persistent one. Uh, yeah, Einstein played the violin, and I hear he was pretty decent with numbers. But if you round up a group of math geniuses, you'll only find the same number of good musicians in that group as you'll find in the general population. My point might be even clearer if I reverse the scenario. Imagine you've rounded up a thousand world-class musicians. How many math geniuses would you expect to find in that group? More than average? No way. Better yet, go stand in front of an orchestra and say, wow, I bet you guys are all great at math. They'll appreciate the laugh so much that they'll probably invite you out for a drink. And you'll be the one calculating the tip. Yes, math has patterns and music has patterns, but that's where the similarity ends. Language also has patterns, but it has very little to do with math. Weather has patterns too, but not much to do with music. Yet for some reason people are convinced that studying music will make you a better physicist or an engineer, while almost no one expects it to make you a better translator or weatherman. The fact is, you can learn more math from studying billiards than you can from playing a musical instrument. But you don't see many parents shuttling their kids to the local pool hall after school. And that's a good thing. Bad reason number two. Music improves school performance in general. You've heard the rumor, no doubt, that kids who play musical instruments do better in school. You've probably even heard that scientific studies back this up. Well, not quite. The studies only show correlation. They don't prove or even suggest causation. And as we all remember from junior high science class, just because two things coincide or correlate does not mean that one caused the other. To put it another way, kids who do well in school don't do so because they play an instrument. It just looks that way because kids who do well in school and kids who take music lessons often have a third variable in common, highly involved and fairly affluent parents. That is to say, the type of kid whose parents opt for music lessons is also the type of kid whose parents value and expect good grades. Moreover, Parents who can afford oboe lessons can also afford math tutors. The truth is, a lot of things correlate with, but don't cause good performance in school. There's almost certainly a correlation, for instance, between, say, horseback riding and good grades. For some reason, though, not many parents fall into the very expensive trap of concluding that riding horses causes kids to get good grades. You never hear anybody say, saddle up, Peggy, midterms are coming. No, people generally grasp the idea that the family's income is what's supporting both the horseback riding and the high GPA. Bad reason number three, music exposes kids to history and culture. As a former social studies teacher, this one makes me wince. Sure, you can pick up a few noteworthy details about history and culture from music, but only in the most roundabout way possible. Your kid isn't going to learn much about German culture from playing Bach, nor is he going to pick up much Italian history from playing Vivaldi. Take it from a career teacher. If you already know some things about history and culture, studying music can definitely enrich that knowledge. But music isn't the foundation on which to build that learning. The fact is, simply watching TV would be a more direct way to learn culture and history than learning how to play a musical instrument. And I generally don't advocate watching TV. Just making a point here. 
If you really want to expose your kid to other cultures, take the money you would have wasted on music lessons and spend it on travel instead. Or maybe a Nat Geo subscription. Bad reason number four, music nurtures self-expression. Music can certainly be a great outlet for emotions and a conduit for creativity, but only if you like making music. Otherwise, it's a source of frustration and resentment. Do you really think the kid you have to browbeat into practicing is going to turn to that instrument for solace when she's feeling blue? or for inspiration when she's feeling creative? Don't be ridiculous. Let your kid find her own preferred channels for creativity and expression. Many choose poetry or journaling, or short story writing or painting, or drawing, or, oh, look at that. There's no shortage of activities that your kid might enjoy more than music that will accomplish the same goal. Something else to consider is that improvising or composing your own music usually comes pretty far down the road, if at all. The first couple of years of music study are generally spent learning how to physically manipulate the instrument, how to read sheet music, and how to make sense of music theory, all in the service of performing other people's compositions. Sure, there's still an element of self-expression in performing someone else's music, but philosophers could go around in circles debating just how much Schroeder is expressing his own emotions as opposed to Beethoven's when he plays for release on the tiny piano. In short, Learning music just so that you can express yourself would be like learning a second language for the same purpose. It's taking a very long, difficult, and circuitous route to reach the spot you're already standing on. Bad reason number five, music improves memory. Sure, learning music will challenge and therefore improve a person's memory. But you know what? So will mastering dance routines, acting in a play, reciting poetry, learning a second language, and playing almost any card game. Even the most basic video games require players to recall clues and to keep track of where they found keys, rewards, and other game tokens. I'm not advocating video games here. I do not think they're a productive use of a person's time. My point is only that music is no better at training memory than are video games. Therefore, memory training is not a valid excuse to force your kid to learn an instrument. Find an activity that your kid enjoys doing and that also challenges memory and support that activity instead of saying, hey kid, you're a cellist now. Bad reason number six, music teaches self-discipline and perseverance. So you want your kid to learn that hard work and self-sacrifice pay off. Great. That's a critical life lesson and you have my full support. But riddle me this, Taskmaster, are you willing to risk making your kid hate music to achieve that goal? There are many other activities that kids are eager to participate in that also teach self-discipline and perseverance. Choose one of those. Sports is a great example. Why would you go to war with your kid over practicing the clarinet if she'll get an even greater sense of achievement from the effort she puts into soccer, which she loves? But Brian, you say, because, you know, we're on a first name basis now. My kid wants to quit just because music is harder than he thought it was going to be, and I want him to push through and learn the value of perseverance. To which I reply, don't kid yourself. Harsh truth alert. Chances are very good that the real reason you want your kid to stick with music lessons that he's not enjoying is that you're afraid of wasting the money you've invested so far. And that's misguided for two reasons. First, why should your kid suffer months or even years because of one unintentional bad decision? Second, making your kid continue with music lessons he doesn't like is just throwing good money after bad. If he's going to quit anyway, let him quit now instead of three years and several thousand more dollars down the road. Think of it like clothes. Your kid is inevitably going to outgrow some things and is simply not going to wear others no matter how much you paid for them. Accept it as one of the many costs of parenting and move on. Please also consider the message you're unintentionally sending your child. When you tell her that playing the violin is good for her because it will teach her how to tolerate displeasure and to stick with an activity she dislikes. Think what you're saying there about music. If that's the grim life lesson you want to teach your child, Ebenezer, fine. But don't give her a violin. Give her a shovel and make her dig holes out in the backyard. Look, if your child likes making music, then yes, she'll also learn valuable lessons about self-discipline from practicing. But she's not going to learn those lessons from doing something she hates. She's going to associate music and you with drudgery. Bad reason number seven, music teaches responsibility and teamwork. Well, okay, sure it does. But so does participating in a play or caring for a pet, tending a garden, joining a debate team, and participating in any team sport. So why force a kid to learn teamwork in marching band when the same lesson can be learned from football, which he signed up for on his own? Bad reason number eight. Music teaches physical dexterity. Well, of course it does, but so do the following. Drawing, painting, sculpting, dancing, sewing, knitting, cooking, yoga, and of course, sports. There's an old saying in the fitness community that the most beneficial workout is whichever one you'll do. 
In other words, swimming is well known for providing a full body workout, but swimming is no workout at all if you can't drag yourself to the pool on a regular schedule. Likewise, sprinting burns a lot more calories than walking, but walking beats the hell out of sprinting if you're not willing or able to sprint. Well, surprise, surprise. That goes for just about everything. So if you want to teach your kid about teamwork or responsibility or perseverance, the activity best suited to the job is the one that he or she will actually do. If that's music, great. If not, choose something else. Better yet, let your kid do the choosing. Here are three things you need to consider before going down the rabbit hole of music lessons and instrument purchases. First, has your kid ever asked you for music lessons or at least shown some unusual interest in live musical performances? Notice that I didn't ask if your kid likes music. That is not a useful indicator. There's a world of difference between playing a saxophone and clicking the play button on Spotify. Don't pretend you didn't know that. That would be like assuming that everyone who enjoys eating will love learning how to cook or that everyone who's ever admired a Picasso is eager to take up painting. See if your child has a genuine interest in making music, not just listening to it. And if it's not there, walk away. Second, if you still insist on offering your kid lessons, even though she hasn't expressed an interest yet, don't specify an instrument. Don't ask if she wants piano lessons or violin lessons. Just ask if she wants music lessons and see where that goes. If the answer is no, or even just a shrug, let it go, let it go. Assure her that the offer will always be on the table and drop the subject. If you find that you can't drop it, at least compromise by taking your kid to some live performances. Maybe that will spark an interest, but the spark has to come first, not the instrument, not the lessons. Third, I want you to close your eyes now and do a little thought experiment with me. Imagine that you bought your kid an instrument, that you paid for years of lessons, and that your kid loved every minute of it. Close your eyes. Your kid's happy. You feel great. You're such a good parent. Now picture your child in his late teens, nearing the end of high school. He comes to you bursting with enthusiasm. He has big, exciting news. He has decided to become a professional musician. So what's your gut feeling about that slugger? Really, did you wince, frown, draw back in disgust? How will you feel if your kid decides to make a career out of music? Could you handle that? You probably put your kid in piano lessons thinking it would make her a better student and eventually a better heart surgeon or corporate lawyer. But what if she decides she wants to be a concert pianist or, God forbid, form her own rock band? If the thought of that makes you cringe, you have no business forcing your kid to take music lessons. Drop the checkbook and back away slow. Okay, grab some milk and cookies and put on your fuzzy bunny slippers, because I'm going to wrap this up with a little story. Once upon a time, when I was eight and my brother was ten, we came home from school to find an organ in the living room. An organ. Two keyboards, full set of pedals, dozens of tabs, toggles and buttons. What were my parents thinking? Neither of them had ever played a musical instrument, and neither my brother nor I had ever expressed any interest in music beyond listening to the radio. And the organ? Really? At that age, I'd never heard of Keith Emerson or Billy Preston. The only organist I knew was the little old lady in church, and that's the chilling image that came immediately into my mind when I saw the organ in our living room. Well, guess how this little experiment in parenting turned out? Exactly. My brother and I spent nearly a year locked in a passive-aggressive war of attrition with our parents. They nagged us to practice and we stonewalled them. We never practiced unless threatened directly with the loss of some privilege that we valued. My brother and I won the war. Of course! We bled the family budget of all disposable income and forced to surrender. Our music lessons were canceled, the organ was sold at a fraction of its purchase price, and my brother and I were as upset with our parents as they were with us. Lose, lose. Fast forward five or six years. Now I'm a shy teenager who's seen lots of evidence that girls like musicians. The Beatles, in fact, were literally being chased through the streets by girls. I wanted to be chased by girls. So I asked my parents for guitar lessons and a guitar. Well, you can imagine the response. Fool me once, right? They scoffed at me for a year before finally caving in and helping me buy a guitar. And then they were shocked, shocked, I say, when I started practicing on my own, without being badgered, without being threatened. A couple of years later, I took up the piano, and then I had to take up sprinting in order to escape from all the girls who were chasing me. In my mind. And no, my parents were not at all thrilled when I informed them soon thereafter that I wanted to study music in college. How's that for coming full circle? The people who forced me to take organ lessons and who fumed at me for quitting were now horrified that I wanted to actually be a musician. O. Henry himself could not have written a more ironic ending. Look. Learning how to make my own music has been an enormously rewarding addition to my life.
But that doesn't mean it's for everybody. There are millions of highly accomplished, well-adjusted, and above all, happy people in the world who enjoy listening to music without making any of their own. Please keep that in mind when making decisions about how long you're going to pressure your kid to take music lessons. If you found this video helpful, please click the like button and subscribe to my channel. I also suggest that you check out my other videos, especially the one titled, How to Help Your Kids Succeed at Music. It's just a click away. I'll see you over there.